Hey gang, how we doing? East Coast Lumberjack here. I got a special project today in the shop. Uh, we're making uh, handles for a disabled person, okay? So they have a little bit of a inability for, for a grip on their hands. So uh, this guy, he's a great guy, came from Nova Scotia. Uh, I met him at the Steel Timber Sports Eastern Qualifier in Truro. Uh, he came up to the house here uh, a couple weeks ago, and we had a really, really good chat about uh, handles and and what he's able to do and not able to do. Um, anyways, he doesn't have a lot of grip in one, in one hand, so he needs a little bit of assistance down there on the grip. So, a typical a typical handle that I would make like this, um, it's got a lot of flare on it so so my east coast lumberjack is known for their palm swells okay we make really nice palm swells so that they fit your hand and, and it won't slide off so a typical handle a hardware store handle so this is a double bit hardware handle okay there's hardly anything here uh, this is maple as well so it's nice and smooth it's worn smooth so his ability to hang on to this handle was really limited so, we played around with some of my patterns, looked at them, felt them out. Now, one thing that, that helped him a lot with grip was the octagonal shape, okay? The uh, <laughs> butt needs a little bit of work here yet, but no big deal. We're going to get there. But the octagonal shape, okay, so the eight-sided shape, okay, that, that helped him a fair bit as far as keeping it back and forth. So, we're going to make some handles with an octagonal shape. And then, of course, we we accentuated the palm swell. So this one here, look at that palm swell. So let's compare the two of them. Okay, so this is a hardware store palm swell, East Coast Lumberjack palm swell. Okay, pretty obvious where the difference is. Okay, so when we did that and showed him, uh, so for example, here's a, here's a, here's a couple of handles. That he here's a couple of handles that he had on his so this one here was on a 24 inch axe okay so this is a typical hardware store handle okay uh it's flared a little bit this way hardly anything this way okay and again that's if you put your handles in a machine or you take your your handles off of a you're just chopping them out sawing them out of a it's got wire in it um out of a block you you won't get you won't get the nice palm swells. Here's another one. This now this one here came from uh, this is a council tool handle. Okay, um, the grain. This is a hickory handle. The grain not bad. It's a little sideways in the eye, so obviously it's a little sideways in the palm swell. Not a lot of swell here. Um, now some guys, if if I was throwing an axe or something, that would be nice. It'd come out of my hand nice and easy. But if you want to hang on to the thing. It's not great. So, so we have these two here. We have these two. This council one came with a couple of wedges, which is nice. Um, but anyways, let's look at what, what we made. Okay. So this is the advantage of a custom shop. Okay. So let's look at the handle. Okay. So look at the difference. Okay. Huge difference here in the palm swell. So when we made this one, so all I did, I put, a, I put an Aussie palm swell on a hatchet handle ah, and then I made it octagonal so here's an octagonal handle okay comes down and then I left it a little bit rougher and I've got a pretty wild well I wouldn't say wild but it comes in nice and narrow here his hands not as big as mine so I've narrowed it in before the palm swell and then flared it right out okay so when he put that in there even even with his the, the lack of strength he has to hold it, this here is not slipping out. So he loved it. He said, "Man, that is that's an incredible handle." So let's do that to some of the other ones. So here's the regular 24 inch handle that he, that he would have had, and here's the East Coast Lumberjack handle in there. Okay. So huge difference. Now we're also gonna. <laughs> he wants a full meal deal. So we're gonna we're gonna burn these handles, okay? They're white ash, so we're gonna pop the grain on them a lot with a, with a little burn. Then I'm gonna uh, lay the boiled linseed oil to it, and I'm gonna leave this end 
typically I, I use my, where is it, right there, I use my Nicholson uh, wood rasp to finish these fairly smooth, but I'm not doing that down here. Check out the end of this, see how that's still rough? Okay, right there you can see the striations from my, um, where is it, right here. So this is an old, and actually these are hard to find now. I don't even know whether you can find them. I don't know who makes them. But they're like an axe. They were called an axe uh, rasp. But one side of them has these really rugged teeth. Okay, you see those? And they work really good for putting striations in my palm swells. So we did that with this one. So I've got a rougher end, wide palm swell, and octagonal. And he could use it really well. So that's what we're doing now. So I thought I'd bring you along just in case, and there may be people out there that are making hails for guys that may they may wrestle with this, okay? It, it may be a little bit tough for you to find something that's got a good palm sole, because again, this is typically what you're going to find in a hardware store. So if you can't find something, you can, and, and now up here <laughs> in the great white north, <laughs> where I happen to be in Canada, in the wintertime, is it, now it's right now it's October, early October, okay? And things, it's just a, the... Uh, Mercury is starting to dip. Okay, so it's getting a little cooler out. So we're dressing a little bit warmer, but eventually we are going to wear gloves and mitts on our hands. Now, even if you think, oh, I can grab that pretty good now, <laughs> take that baby out in the winter. <laughs> so you're going to have your mitts or gloves on, and as soon as you take a swing of the tree, whoosh, okay, you're doing axe row for distance. <laughs> so you're you just don't have the grip okay that you do in your regular hands so of course these things they become pretty useless okay i'll be honest with you up here in the great white north now again if you're below the 49th parallel you may get away with it but up here it ain't happening in the winter okay so you need a palm swell you need some kind of flare that's going to stop that handle from coming out of your hand so we do that here okay at east coast lumberjack so i've made i even did this now he's got a hammer handle right here that's a nice little handle it's loose okay it's missing a, a wedge up here so we needed to tighten that but i thought you know what let's just put let's do the same thing to that so here's my hammer handle and again it's shaped like a hammer handle but down below here you'll see that it's it's hammer shaped but then i've got this real swell okay so look at this look at the difference between those two okay so that hammer when i finish this off He's, he's got a good grip on it again, okay? So I'll take that in a little bit narrower. I'll rough it up. And he's got the palm swell there that'll keep that from coming out of his hand. So I've done that with all these. We've even got a, this is a little uh, camp hatchet. Same thing. Um, this one here wasn't, a, he liked the shape of this. He liked the feel of it. And actually, this one here has a little bit of a swell on This actually is not too bad. But of course, I accentuated that just a little bit more. And again, it stops your hand perfect. So now, what we're doing, as I'm finishing these handles up, so I'm using my spoke shave. Bring it down here a little bit. There, how's that? Okay, so I'm using my trusty Lee Valley spoke shave, and I'm just finishing these off. And then what, I, what I'm doing to the, what I'm doing right here down at the end, I'm using that rough. X rasp and I'm just putting those striations in down here on these octagonal pieces okay so what that's going to do is it's going to give him a little bit more grip down here when he hooks onto these handles so it's nice and smooth up here octagonally smooth but down here I'm putting this these striations in. So, so oh yeah, that's that's great. So he's got a whole lot more grip. Now, remember the last video how how filthy the shop was? Check it out now. Okay, so so the kid finally went at it. Okay, so. Everything's in a lot better shape. <laughs> I'm finally, I'm finally catching up on a few things because, because as I said, we were running the shows. Now, 
Now, man, <laughs> thank the good Lord. Things have been going great at these Lumberjack shows. So we were down to the Freiburg Fair. If you've never been to the Freiburg Fair in southwestern uh, Maine, the Freiburg Fair is a phenomenal fair. Okay, and they've got a big Lumberjack show. Yesterday, it was probably about 10,000 spectators. Usually, there's upwards of 20,000 spectators. A little bit smaller crowd yesterday, uh, on Monday, but man, it was it was awesome. And of course, they've got a open division, a masters division, and a super masters division. So we made out quite well down there. Actually, the uh, my my second son Nathan, he took the he took the open division, had a great day. The boys were chopping this up a storm, and uh, even my daughter Katie, even the old fart, I even I was second and third in the chops in the masters division. So you know, with guys like Super Dave Jewett there and uh, and Don Lambert, uh, there were some, you know, some good choppers there. So to come out, uh, Vince Maciel was there, uh, Sheridan Doyle. So lots of big names in our business, been around quite a while, good competitors. And uh, to jump up ahead of those guys, Herb Gingras, now, th now there's a famous name. So shout out to Herb. Now, <laughs> Herb and I have been good friends for a long time. And it's, uh, in all honesty, I love going to the shows just to see guys like that. Now, he's a quality guy. I just want to tell you, he helps out a lot of people down there getting into the sport. He's tougher than flipping whalebone. I'm telling you this guy, he, he is doing sawing, standing around waiting for these guys to get the, the show going. And when they said go, he halt, his hip comes out of joint, back in, finishes that. He's, he's in ext extreme pain. You can tell the guy's in pain. And he sits there a bit. Gritting his teeth, hauls her back in, and then he's up doing an underhand chop. <laughs> the guy is incredible. Okay, so Herb's one of my heroes in the in this world. He's a great guy, and uh, so anyhow, it was some awesome to see these guys yesterday and and see the the toughness. Like man, I don't know, you don't see a lot of that in the new generation. But boys, I'll tell you, some of these old guys, they've got the stink man alive. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, I've been running around to a lot of these shows, and because of that, I'm not getting much done here in the shop. And I'm going away again. <laughs> so this weekend, this weekend we're headed to Nova Scotia, okay, so the, the last show of the year, and thank goodness because I want to get into hunting, <laughs> but the last show of the year is in Middle Muscadab in Nova Scotia. And it's, uh, there's going to be some, uh, some neat guys there. You're talking about old fellas. Carl Bischoff, the godfather of Lumberjack Sports in the West Coast. He's going to be there. So it's going to be great to see Carl. I haven't seen Carl in about, what, almost two years now I haven't seen Carl. So uh, we were at the World Axe Throwing Championship a couple years ago in uh, Barrington, Nova Scotia. So they flew him out. He's doing an east-west thing. Axe throwing, and he's hanging around for the Lumberjack show, which is great. He and uh, Nick Hall, another great guy, Nick Hall. I haven't seen him in a couple years. So uh, we'll see those guys and compete against them, which is good because they're still, well, uh, Nick's, Nick's a little younger than I am, but uh, he's still, he's a great competitor. Carl will be there in the Masters Division, so uh, we'll have a lot of fun there in Nova Scotia. So because I'm going back down where my friend is from in uh, Truro, I'm trying to get these handles all done up so I can take them with me and uh, get them back to him. So that's the goal. And <laughs> and the old East Coast Lumberjacks made a purchase. <laughs> so, so my wife and I have been saving up some money. We're, we're going to Europe, okay? We're headed to Europe. Because the boys are going to the Steel Timber Sports World Championships. And again, they're, the boys are firing on both cylinders right now, I want to tell you. So, of all years to go, I thought, man, this would be a good year to go and watch the boys. Because they're they're really cooking right now. they got a good team. Team Canada looks pretty solid. So, uh, we're going to go over, spend a couple days, see a few sites, and join the boys at the Steel World Championships on November 8th and 9th. So, um, the other thing we did is we bought an old RV. Now, it's old. <laughs> okay. The RV, actually... Is the same vintage as when I started in this business. <laughs> okay, so you all know I've I've been around a long time. Okay, 40 years. Okay, it'll be it'll be 40 years in a year that I've been at this. Okay, well that's when the van when the RV was built. <laughs> so it's old. 
and I got to steal, okay? I didn't pay much for it because it, it needs some work, and it's getting some work right now. So this weekend, the big road trip, and I'll probably put you on camera here and, and show you the road trip with the old with the old RV. But uh, it's been around. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get to Nova Scotia in one piece without breaking down. <laughs> We're going to do some tree work down there. I'm going to get rid of some handles, and I'm going to compete at Muscadavid. So that's the plan for this weekend. It should be a pile of fun. Anyway, so... I'm doing a lot of running around, <laughs> so I'm back in the shop now. This I talked to him early in the summer, so I'm, I'm and just so you guys know that are expecting handles, I'm now back into the I'm down through the clipboard a bit. So um, the end of August, early September orders we're now into. Okay, so I'm I am six weeks behind, and I and I apologize for that. But again, uh, life kind of took over and uh, things got busy, so I'm back in the shop now. Evenings are, uh, it's dark, getting early. It's going to be hunting season, which I love. And uh, I'll be making a lot more handles. So I should be able to clean these handle orders up pretty quick. So, and I got to clean up a bunch of them before we head out to Europe. <laughs> okay. So heads up to people just what's going on in the East Coast Lumberjack shop. Just, you know, what's, what's shaking. So again, let's finish up uh, on this side. I'll show you what I'm doing. So I take, I'm taking my spoke shave now. And I'm just going to smooth up the top part of the handle. And we're going to leave that octagonal shape. So I'll go along my existing corners and angles. This one here is I'm done. And then I'll do the back. Come this way because I'm going against the green. Okay. So that's all smoothed up there. Now what I'll do is take this other little rasp. And I'm going to rough up, put some lines in the bottom part of this octagonal. And again, I'm doing that so that he has good grip. And I want it so it feels a little bit small to me because it'll probably be perfect for him. So that's, we're getting there. Okay, yeah, so that's... That's roughed up good. So now what I want to do, we want to finish it off. So we'll look good for it. We'll put some octagonal lines in this just to finish it. Okay, that side's done. And we'll finish the other side. So this is a an axe handle for someone that's Say, I'd say, well, maybe mechanically impaired, okay? He's got, he's got a little bit of an issue with his grip. So this one looks like, this is what this one now looks like. So it's octagonal at the top. So I, I need to smooth that out a little bit here. You can see that. Okay, so the rat, the, the spoke shape made a little bit of, a little bit of bumps here. So I'll smooth that out. And actually, the easy way to do that, just take this one here. Put it in here in the vise, just like that, okay? So it just takes a few swings and look, okay? So nice and smooth. Okay, but it's octagonal shaped right here. A little bit of, little bit of bumps, but then down here we've got it pretty torn up because we want to give them some of that grip, okay? And it fits. <coughs> Fits the hand really nice. Okay, so let's let's do the full meal deal. Okay, let's see. There's that one. There's that one. Okay, that's this one. So I've got, I've got a few different axes to do. So this is the little red one. So let's let's take the wedge out of this. Okay. So if we look at the end of this here, you can see there's a metal wedge in. The handle has dropped a little bit since it was first hung. So I'll put my rubber jaws in just to hold it. And the other thing I'd say when you're doing this, when you're taking handles out, point your blade down. Okay? If you point that down, because if it's up, you're going to get cut. Okay? And I, I, I can cut myself with a spoon. <laughs> so, I'm putting it down. And then we're going to take a screwdriver and just work at that wedge. Okay? So, it shouldn't take a whole lot. Where's my... 
There it is. I need my, I need my Marto. So I'm just going to pound that in and just pry, okay? And if you pry a little bit, that should pop that wedge out. No, it's not. Let's just stay in here a little bit snug. So we'll try it at the top. There. So I just I just pounded the wedge down to leave a little bit of a gap at the top. Now we'll jump in here at the top and pry it downwards. There. So that popped out a little bit there. So we're just going to work it back and forth at the bottom and pry it up. At the top and pry it down. A couple times like that. We'll have her loose. A little bit better there. Okay, so now she's working back and forth. So the big the biggest thing is you gotta get it loose, okay? You gotta wiggle it back and forth at the top and bottom enough that it gets loose. Okay, so here, here it is. And you can see that there's a gap in the top and the bottom. So it's coming loose starting to spit out of there just a little bit. I know it's, my bench is probably pointing the wrong direction for filming, I know, but it sure is in the right direction for what I'm doing. <laughs> So you just got to keep working it, okay? Back and forth, wiggling it back and forth. It'll come. Don't be bashful. Just got to keep working at it. There, coming a little bit more. It's hanging on pretty good. This old metal wedge. Just putting up a good fight. There. Well, that just jumped out a little bit more, so I'll take my pliers, grab a hold of that, and hopefully when I pull this time she'll she'll stay out. That's the plan. There we go. Okay. Voila. Okay, so I've taken a bunch of those out. I've got, I've got a handful of those now. They're, they, they were wedged quite a bit. So I'm just taking these out. I'll save them off to the side. It's quite a big hole here now in this axe head because it was filled mostly. It's a small eye. Now the other thing, I'm not overly crazy. I'm not overly crazy about these hatchets with really tiny eyes, okay? There's not a lot of wood there. So, but now, of course, with that wedge out, there's a little bit of wood on each side. So all I'll do to pound that out, I'll take this rasp, that end of it, put it right here on the side of that, where I know I've got a little bit of wood, and just tap it out, okay? So what, I, what I'm going to do, and this is probably good for people. So I just set it in my vise like this, okay? So open your vise jaws enough that you can put the handle in here. And then the head, the head sits right here on both sides of your vise, okay? And then you're going to tap from the top. And, of course, that holds the metal in place. And you're just going to... There we go. You're just going to put this on the side where you know you've got a little bit of wood. And you're going to tap that down. Okay, so it made a little bit of a jump there. 
Move it over to the side. Okay. A few taps, and you're clear. Actually, that eye looks a little bit better now. That's actually a little bit bigger eye than I was expecting. So the red paint, the red paint on it made it look a little bit smaller than it was. So that's not too bad of an eye. So, we're going to take our trusty little handle, a little hatchet handle, the new one that we've made. It's got the nice palm swell, the roughed up end. And I'm going to put that in my rubber jaws. And we're going to hang this thing. So a hatchet hang here. So always take your axe head, line it up with your handle. And you can see here, I'm not too far off. So the end of it is here on this, this other end. So I'm not too far off. I don't have a whole lot to do, which is nice. And of course I did that because I lined, when I'm drawing my pattern, I put the axe right on there and, and I made those two lines at the top where the outside margins of the eye were so that I know when I cut that out I'm going to be pretty close to where I want to be so it saves you a lot of work with the wood at this stage of the game so again most of your because it's teardrop shaped it's coming in right here so most of the work is on this part of your handle taking that wood off and I know I'm a little bit wide so I gotta go the whole way along here Slope it down in the front, then I round it in the back. Okay, and then we're going to flop it over. So it doesn't take too long to do these hatchet handles. It'll be about a five minute hang, hopefully. If all goes well, I'm just going to round out the back like I did the other side. Round that over. Flatten it down here a little bit, and I'm going to take this corner right here, we know. And it's got to come down and provide that teardrop shape. Right, we're going to do that. Right, now, let's see how close we are. Okay, we're a little bit, a little bit more everywhere. So I'm going to take a little bit more off the back and round it. Flatten it this way, just a smidgen. Roll that front just a little bit more. And the same thing over here. Now, just when we set this, I want to show you a couple of important tricks for making sure everything's lined up, okay? We're going to do that in just a second here. So take it down a little bit more in the teardrop. Round it out a little bit more here in the back. Flat a little bit there. Okay. Let's see where, okay, it's in there. We're still just a whisker long. Oh, no, there it is. Front to back, there we go, perfect. So we're on, now. Okay, so we're on. Not far, but we are on. So, again, same thing with a chopping axe, and I've, to I've talked about this before on hangs. There's two things you wanna line up, okay, on your axe head. This point, which is called the toe, this point, which is called the heel, and right here on your palm swell. That wants to be in a straight line. And you want it in a straight line so that when you swing this axe, you hit in the middle. Most of your axes are curved. This one doesn't have a whole lot of curve on it, a little bit. But you want to hit right in the middle of that. In order to do it, those two points need to be lined up with this. I think it's called the pole. So I need a straight edge to show you. There, I'll get my trusty broom. Because it's straight <laughs> and it's black. So, we want it in toe and heel. So, you can see that this has to be tipped this way. Okay, so the axe head has got to go on a little bit more like this. That might be too much. Almost perfect. Okay, so I want to be set like this. Now there's a, unfortunately in the past, this hatchet has taken a little bit of abuse. You can see here it's rolled at the back, so it's been used as a hammer, which drives axe guys like me bananas. <laughs> but I know what it's like. You got 
no don't have a hammer you got to get stuff put on so you do what you do now the other thing you need to line up is you want to line up the bit with the middle of your handle here okay so the length of the bit the middle of the handle have to be lined up so I've got to turn this like that once you get it all lined up take your hammer and tap it on so we come on a little bit more there okay so then check your angle so again we're right in the middle of it here this way here I always use my bench so we're, we're good we're good right there so I want to pound that it's just starting to, to uh, roll just a little bit here so I'm going to tap that a little bit more okay so the axe head sits down a little bit further then we're going to pop it back out and work here it is Okay, so I'm going to turn it around this way. It stays there. So we're just going to tap this back out, the handle out. Oops, what's going on here? Oh, I slipped in. I see. I'm going to say she's not moving. That's because it slipped a little. There. We're, we didn't have enough to purchase. So now, when you look at this, Okay, you can see how the axe head has squeezed that where it's too big. Okay, so that tells you what you're going to take off. Okay, so everything's lined up. If it wasn't lined up, we'd take a little bit more off of one side than the other, but it is lined up. So I'm just going to continue to take this off with my spoke shape. Okay, all the way around because it's, it's grabbing everywhere there right now. So we're going to spoke shave it right into those dark marks there's a fair bit at the front here I'm gonna come right along because it's dragging everywhere right now it's dragging at the back we'll round this out a little bit back here like that a little bit more on the other side Now it's not it's not touching there, so I, I don't have to do anything there. Behind it is dragging. So we'll round that out where it's dragging there. And then it's dragging at the front. Okay. So we've cleaned that out. Now this should slide on pretty nice. Which it does. Okay, so we're we are halfway hung right now. Which is what we want. Okay, so we'll line up our lines again. Not bad. Should needs to come down just a little bit. So we will I will tap that down right now. There. A little bit more even. Okay. Make sure it's lined up this way, which it is. And we'll tap that again. You can hear it fetch up. See that? We're almost there. And we know everything's lined up, which is nice. Beautiful. Now, I'm going to check how much it's dragging in here. A little bit there. Almost nothing on this side. And we're pretty close here. So, the question. <laughs> <laughs> the question is now do I pound that on the rest of the way so some guys will start driving this home okay hit it really hard make that it'll all curl underneath here and then they'll wedge it okay because they know it's really tight now the East Coast Lumberjack I'm going to say there's two reasons I would not do that now number one I want if you look at the bottom here you can see it's still rough between where I've been spoke shaving and where I made the handle smooth. I will want that off. I want to finish it in here. Okay. Make this a nice gradual smooth transition. From where the axe head is going to sit. To where the handle is. So I want it off for that reason. So I can smooth that out. And then sand it. Before I put the axe head on one last time. 
for its final wedging, its final seating. Okay, so that's one reason. The second reason I'll do that is because if you let that curl and then just cut it off, it creates a weak point in your handle. So if I smooth that out and make it a gradual transition, I remove that weak part of the handle. Okay, so for those two reasons, I'm going to risk denting the top because I pound that on there pretty good. So when I kind of take it off this time, it's likely going to dent up top there a little bit. Which is fine because I'm going to leave it a little bit proud and then I'll cut that all right off. Okay, and again, in order to do that, I've got to take a little bit more off here on the bottom. So when you get close, don't get overexcited and then just pound it. <laughs> don't do that. Okay, that winds up being a poor hang. So bump it off. Again, you're going to have a nice tight fit because it's going to come down a little bit more anyhow. But it's going to be finished beautifully up here. Okay, as the transition goes from the handle into the eye. And that's what you want. You want to, Let's do a good job on these things. <laughs> so we're going to pop it out and finish that up. Okay. So I'll move these back again. Now I might try to do that with my trusty old Canadian Railroad railway spike because it's got a lot more surface area just there, just to get it started. Okay, so it didn't indent it at all because I know this one here is narrow enough, it will. But now that I've got it started, I can just put that on, tap the rest away, it comes out slick as, slick as a button. Okay. So, now the goal is going to be to finish this up. Okay, so I'm going to uh, spoke shave it here, and then I'm going to wood rasp all of this. Again, remember it's octagonal up top here. There's a little bit of mark there I want to fix. But I want to I want to smooth this out right into this transition into the axe head. Okay, so we want to make it look nice. Nice gradual flow into that eye. So again, we're going to take some off here where we know it was going to curl and cause a weak point. So that's gone. And now see we've got a little bit of a little bit of rough spot spot here. So I'm gonna where it's octagonal, I'm gonna stay on that octagonal and rasp it in here. Okay, so that's an, it continues right smoothly into here. Same thing here, it's flat. I'm gonna roll that in. The very edge out here, I'm gonna round it because I want that to slip into the axe head. And then back here, the same thing, on that same octagonal angle. I'm going to bring that right in. Okay? So there. So now that's a nice, smooth transition. Okay, a little bit more right there. There. Okay, nice and smooth. I'll do the back. And now it's round up front here. It goes into the axe. So, now that that's nice and smooth, all you want to do is take a piece. There it is. A piece of your sandpaper, and I'm just going to sand that smooth. So, give it a finish. Give it a nice finished look. So when you just set that axe head on there and seat it and wedge it, it's going to look pretty, okay? We like pretty. <laughs> okay, so here's what it was. This is what the other side looks like. So this is the before, okay? And where it's starting to cut into your handle, we're going to smooth that out. Here's the rough lines coming into it, okay? And then this is the finished look. Okay, look at that, okay? Nice and smooth right in here to the eye. Okay, nice gradual transition from the octagonal into the rounded eye. Okay, so see how that looks? So you, if you pound it on, it's going to be like this. If you finish it, it looks like this. So that's a whole goal. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're almost there. So again, spoke shave where we know the dark stuff is, where we need to make that a gradual transition into the axe head like 
that in the front where it's grabbing a little bit. Okay. So that's done. Now we're going to take our rasp and bring those octagonals. I'm going to fix up that little notch back here. Smooth this out. Right here on this, I can see a couple of lines that aren't smooth. I'm going to smooth those out. And then this front part. Okay, there we go. Okay. So same thing, it's nice and smooth there now, the whole way out. So take your sandpaper, finish sanding it. So it's a nice gradual, smooth and finished transition into the eye. There. Now make sure you make sure that the toe that's the long it's a little bit longer this way that always faces bottom sliding on there pretty sweet right now there now if you look at this you'll see it's already a little bit proud and I still need a little bit of wiggle room down here so now we can take it the rest of the way on there so you can see it's nice and proud and look at the bottom here okay no curl no weak point nice and snug the whole way around no weak point okay so all i'm going to do now is put my wedge in and finish it off and i may not have oh yeah i do right here i didn't think i had a wedge but i think there's a couple here one, two. Okay. Ash wedge. So, sometimes what happens, that closes up. A little bit open at the bottom, closes up. So when it closes up on you like that, just take your uh, slotted screwdriver and your hammer and go along that little kerf again to open it up. Okay, so you're just going to tap your hand, your screwdriver in there wiggle it back and forth and pull it out and I'll, I'll show you what that does here in just a second just going to open that gap again okay so that you can get your wedge a hole in there so when I do that it's gone from what you saw before to this so now your wedge will go in now the other thing I should mention you see there's a little bit of a gap at the front of this eye so put your wedge in a little bit forward don't sit just don't line it up with this wood bring a little bit ahead to fill that okay so i'm going to bring it ahead that far so that it fills that gap okay now it's bigger than the eye all i'm going to do is tap it along okay and it's going to break off where the axe is saying you can't come in here okay so see it's starting to break at the back and the front so the other thing is and sometimes your wedge will split like this one has that's fine because I'll pound the front part in and that'll widen it so the back will go in so I'll tap the back a bit tap the front a bit and it just keeps going back and forth that one went in See, that one goes in a little bit, then you tap the front, it goes in a little bit farther, and you're just widening that out and getting all kinds of wood down in that kerf, okay, which is what you want. And as much wood in there as we can get. Okay, so see, now it's, it's breaking off because we're starting to really butt against the, the wood there, or the metal in the, in the axe head. So that's pretty darn snug right there, okay? The whole way around. Really tight. It's pushed in there a lot. Now we're going to trim that off in the bandsaw. Okay, 
So now we've trimmed it off a little bit proud, okay? And if you leave it a little bit proud, that pushing out at the top will keep the ax head from coming off. So now I'll just take my rasp and then just go around this here, okay, and clean that up. And then I'll round off the sides of this proud wood that's sticking out. Just to roll it off so it doesn't catch you. And I'm using this old file, not my good Nicholson, because I don't want to I don't want to doll up the teeth on it. Okay. There. So there it is. Okay, so nice little hatchet for him that's not coming out of his hand when he swings it. Okay, so that's bringing you along for the uh, making a specialized hatchet handle. And this is for fellas, guys or gals, that may have a little bit of a, an issue with, with the grip, with their ability to grip an axe. So we've done an octagonal finish and a large palm swell and a rough palm swell. And by doing that, we've given ourselves a really good little tool that you can hang on to. Okay. So that's a specialized hatchet from the bench of the East Coast Lumberjack. Join us again next time. All kinds of good stuff coming.